Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's PIP uh, training webinar. My name is Shelly Kinnick, and I am the event coordinator with One Source Distributors and your host for today's webinar. We are very excited about today's webinar and have two presenters I would like to introduce to you. Our first presenter is Chris Duran. Chris is the CEO of Western Safety and Associates. In 2018, he joined as a junior partner and as of 2019, Chris, along with his business partner, owns and manages Western Safety Associates. Chris is an OSHA 30 and QSP, QSSP qualified safety specialist. Ann Davis will be moderating today. Ann has been with Protective Industrial Products for seven years and has worked in the safety industry for over 30 years. Anne enjoys working with end users to help solve safety challenges and provide them a safer work environment. Anne's area of expertise are hand protection, protective clothing, heat stress, head protection, and eye protection. Before I hand the mic over to Chris, I just have a few items to discuss about today's webinar. We'd love to hear from you during today's presentation. If you have a question for our speaker, please send it to all participants through the Q&A panel. All questions will be answered at the end of the training session. After the Q&A session, Anne will announce the raffle prize winners. Anne will be raffling off some really cool promotional products. I will be contacting the winners after the webinar to confirm shipping details, glove size, and uh, details about um, glasses. Immediately following the webinar, a survey will pop up on your screen. Please make sure to complete it so that we can use your feedback to improve for future webinars. Lastly, this webinar will be recorded. You will receive information to access the recording after the webinar. So without further ado, I'd like to kick things off by welcoming Chris Duran. Chris, over to you. All right. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're doing well and staying safe out there. Um, got a couple key topics to go over today for you. Uh, first, we're going to cover identification. Identification has become uh, a really hot button topic for the industry uh, due to some of the COVID restrictions or COVID, COVID protocols we've been dealing with uh, on a, a daily basis now in our work environments. Uh, and then we're going to go over how some of those COVID protocols have brought on some heat stress issues, uh, as well as other heat stress issues and products that, that can help us uh, identify, but also protect against those heat issues. So um, let's get started. So like I said, identification, Identif identification is key. Uh, I know that the old saying is communication is key. Identification is now part of that. Uh, it is nonverbal communication. So. Our identifying of employees uh, is just as important as in identifying hazards throughout a facility. So where were we? Uh, you know, a, a couple of years ago, uh, 2019, this is where we came from. You, you had facilities where everyone could be standing next to each other. You could be having uh, safety talks with everyone um, and no one's wearing masks. Everyone's easily identifiable and everyone can be heard. So that's where we were, where we are now, Unfortunately, we've got some new challenges. Now we have some distancing that we have to go through. I've got a couple different pictures there of uh, different employees at different facilities that are having to social distance themselves. They're wearing PPE items that doesn't make them readily available to identify, uh, and it's become an issue. Uh, if you have personnel that are in parts of the factory that shouldn't be, if you have personnel on a job site like a construction site that should not be in a certain area because they're not wearing the correct PPE to be there, um, it's become an issue. So identification, like I said, is key. This is a, a picture that I like to pick on quite a bit, uh, and it's specifically because you have two different guys right there, uh, and you have PPE that might help identify them. One's wearing a, a blue hard hat, one's wearing uh, kind of a tan off-white hard hat. Maybe the guy in blue is supposed to be uh, handling this, and maybe the guy with the tan hard hat just came over to help out. Because if you look, they're wearing different PPE. One's got some earmuffs on, so he's worried about noise issues. Uh, one's wearing disposable nitrile gloves, while the other's wearing some leather gloves. So uh, we have an issue here where if we can identify that one individual shouldn't be doing this application, we can then quickly address that and make sure that we pull them out of that hazardous situation as a manager or as 
uh, just a an employee myself, I, I'll know that I'm not supposed to be there because I don't have the right PPE. So what's the goal? The goal is to get back to where we were. Obviously, you know, you've got a manager walking down uh, a pathway there, can look over, can identify his employee right away, is saying hello, and, and can identify if that employee is wearing proper PPE uh, and make sure that that employee is in the proper area. How do we get there? Uh, we've got to come up with some new kinds of solutions. So in this picture specifically, you see four different guys. They're all wearing kind of the same thing, but they're also a little different. You have two on the left have face shields on. All of them have different kinds of masks covering their face. Uh, you've got a couple with safety glasses on. You have a couple different vest options there. So there's a lot going on. So how do we how do we better identify to make sure everyone's where they should be doing what they're supposed to be doing? And wearing the PPE they need to be differentiate, you know, we've got a manager on the left there probably who's got a black bottom vest. That's a, a different style vest than the other 3. so maybe we, we change the vest style up and logo that vest. Uh, you also have on that pocket right there a clear clear patch where you can put a uh, an employee ID to make sure you know who that is. Another option might be putting different head protection, uh, you know, these. Face shields were, were kind of a necessity right away. We didn't, uh, we didn't have a lot of options at the time. There are new types of hard hats that have face shields built in like this one right here. Along with that, this hard hat has that clear shield on the top of the hard hat there can be changed to different colors. So you can differentiate all of my electricians need to be wearing uh, a black front of the hard hat. All of my general contractor workers are gonna be wearing brown, all of the uh, water and, and power guys are wearing blue. Uh, so there's differentiation you can do with the hard hat. And then maybe you look at sleeves, you know, you've got one guy in this picture wearing sleeves. They're probably working outdoors all day long. That's a, a possible issue, not only for heat stress, but uh, you might get sunburns. Uh, you might be coming into contact with cut protective issues. So putting a sleeve that can uh, identify an employee who may be working in a certain area or uh, just the managers have black sleeves, just the the non managers wear black, uh, yellow like this, this high vis yellow sleeve. So there's different ways to differentiate and identify employees. All right, so this next 1, another great application here. This is a big factory. They've got forklift traffic going all around. They've got personnel all over the place. Obviously, they're social distance right now, but. If you look at that, everyone's wearing pretty much the similar uh, shirt and and jeans and and so differentiating who is who might become a little bit of a difficult situation there for a manager who's just walking through an area. So something like a bump cap that can be logoed, maybe one area is uh, you know putting putting parts together, so that's your assembly area, and you can logo the hard hat with that. Or maybe just the hard hat is a different color. We can do that in blue. We can do it in yellow, orange, black, whatever the case may be. Um, it's a great way to differentiate. Not only that, if you look at this picture, there's a lot of overhead equipment. They have hoses coming down from the ceiling. There's places where heads can be bumped all over the place. It's good to protect the head. Uh, another option that you could probably go with. They're all wearing uh, that blue and black shirt. Let's throw on the managers uh, a blue vest. Uh, this is a non ANSI vest, so it's a, an affordable vest that they can throw on when they're walking through the facility. Uh, and it, it identifies that manager and that they know that who that is can come over and answer any questions they have. Uh, you could also put these on employees. Obviously, that's got another clear pouch where you can put an employee identification tag. Another option could be, uh, especially for managers, you're walking around that facility and you have a lot of forklift traffic, putting this and you can, obviously it's got a, a little uh, attachment there that you can hang it off of a clipboard, but you could also hang it off uh, a belt loop. It has a clip, so you can clip it to your pants. Uh, you can clip it to other, any other piece of clothing, but with a twist, that's got a, a nice bright light on it that can be seen for a couple hundred yards. So you're very aware of where that employee is and who that employee is if they're wearing that. All right, so these are all types of solutions that we've talked about already. Uh, you know, hard hats, vests, sleeves. You can get into any of the products we just talked about right there. 
Um, these are all things that we need to start identifying uh, employees with. If we're not doing that, uh, it's becoming more and more of an issue of not being able to communicate properly. Uh, and aside from that, if the employees are wearing certain PPE items, we'd like to know that they're in the, the correct area of that facility. So all of that also adds some heat factor. So that kind of uh, leads us right into our next section, which is heat stress. So on heat stress, promoting heat, uh, healthy and safety, warm work environments, whether you're indoors or outdoors, you could be dealing with heat stress situations. So uh, what is heat stress? A buildup of the body's heat generated either internally by the muscle or externally by the environment. Uh, and what do we really have control over? Uh, with PPE, we have external control. We can make sure that they're wearing comfortable, breathable clothing uh, that can also help them uh, evacuate that heat from their body. Uh, so internally, you know, we're giving employees breaks to recover. We're giving employees hydration to help their bodies recover, and uh, and we're attacking it that way. Uh, a heat increase, body temperature, and and the heart rate rise. So a two degree increase can affect mental acuity. So you may be having issues after two degrees of of uh, of heat stress, you may start making mistakes that you normally wouldn't make when you're doing your production. So we're putting people at risk of, of possibly hurting themselves or hurt, hurting others while working. And then, uh, you know, a 5% increase, that results in serious illness or death. Obviously, we all know uh, if you hit 100 degrees, you're having a problem. If you get over that, it's, it's quite a serious situation. So um, we really want to try and limit our heat exposure as much as possible. So heat stress can lead to heat exhaustion and heat stroke. Uh, those are very common issues that we've run into, uh, especially during COVID because we are now uh, eliminating the ability to evacuate heat from the face in a lot of cases because we're wearing face covers. So temperature affects likelihood of, of accidents. Uh, like I said, it, as your temperature rises, uh, you become a, a little more distant, uh, you may become a little bit compromised and could cause some injury to yourself or others. So heat stroke, heat stroke and heat exhaustion, what's the difference? So you got the heat exhaustion, uh, the body responds uh, uh, to an excessive loss of water and salt. And really what you're, you're dealing with right there is um, fatigue. You, you really don't want to have that fatigue when you're on site. So we're trying to alleviate that by making sure they replenish, but also by making sure they don't lose as much, uh, lose as much water and salt out of their body as they sweat. Uh, heat stroke, that's an actual medical condition. We're now dealing with something where we have to get the medical professionals involved because it's gone past uh, an issue of their feeling symptoms. They are now causing permanent damage or at least uh, some damage to their body. So heat stroke, like I said, that's the really bad one. We're really trying to, to guard against that. It's high body temperature. Your, your skin could be super sweaty or super dry. You may have now gone to the point where you can't sweat anymore because you've already sweated all your, your water and salt out. Uh, and so you're super dry. Uh, confusion, loss of coordination, uh, throbbing headaches, seizures, coma, all these are, are possible and likely if we don't address the heat issues. Heat exhaustion, uh, like I said, this is this is not quite as bad, but it is a, a early warning sign that we need to take care of something here. So rapid heartbeat, fast, shallow breathing, um, extreme weakness and fatigue or dizziness, nausea, heavy sweating, uh, slightly elevated body temperature. So, like I said, between one and two degrees, but uh, if, if you're going up that high, uh, we need to start doing something. We need to, to be actively working with that employee to bring their temperatures down. First aid, if symptoms of heat stroke exist, obviously call 911. That's, we have to get medical professionals involved. If they've got a heat stroke, um, it's beyond what we can help them with. They now have to uh, seek medical help. Uh, move worker to cool shaded areas, remove excess clothing and apply cool water or, uh, you know, recovery products. So uh, any kind of hydration products that they can actually uh, in, in ingest that can replenish their, their supply. 
uh, provide cool water or beverages, like I just said, uh, and allow the person to rest. Uh, that's really all you can do. Steps to prevention, uh, acclimate early in the season. It's, it's starting to warm up. Let's start getting everyone used to it and let's make sure we're starting to get uh, the proper PPE prepared for when it does get hot. Provide fluids and breaks and cool shaded areas where loose fitting uh, breathable clothing. We want to allow the body to breathe as much as we can. Uh, you know, during COVID, obviously, that's become a bit of an issue because we do have to add new PPE items in order to keep everyone safe. But um, we will do our best to make sure that we can do that, but also keep them in a, uh, a working condition. Schedule heavy work during the coolest parts of the day. If you're dealing with uh, moving quite a bit of equipment that could could cause uh, a lot of exhaustion for your employees. Do it at the beginning of the day uh, or or do it, you know, if you have a night shift, do it over the night shift. But uh, beginning part of the day is usually the best time to do that. Obviously, if it's going to be a cooler day, maybe it's overcast in the middle of the day, maybe we can move it to then. But try and find a cool part of the day to do that. Monitor, monitor the physical conditions of the workers for signs of symptoms. If, you know, if we're seeing any of those heat exhaustion symptoms is what we're talking about. Make sure we are, are addressing those right away. If it does get to that point where they're at heat stroke, um, like I said, it's gone past what we can do. Educate workers and management. Make sure that the, the workers themselves are taking care of themselves and make sure the management uh, is aware of what they should be doing and overseeing and making sure that they are doing it uh, so that they're taking care of themselves. And then provide proper PPE, which is what we can help you with. So some of the PPE items. Uh, easy cool towels. These are, you know, easy things to to just throw in uh, into the hands of any worker while they're out on a job site, whether they're indoors or outdoors. Uh, this is a cooling towel that you can just wet. It's uh, the first snap and cool. So really, you know, as the, the towel starts to dry out, all the employee has to do is snap the towel. It will start cooling again, uh, but it provides quite a bit of cooling after just 30 seconds. So. Cooling towels are a great option. We also have like a, uh, a cooling bandana or, or uh, neck band that can fit a little closer to the body. If you feel like the cooling towels are too bulky uh, and could cause an issue, they can go to a neck bandana. Uh, and then also uh, something like an easy cool microfiber towel. Those are cut specifically to be longer, but thinner so that they can be worn underneath the garment. So if you're wearing a shirt, you can get this wet slap it slap it on your neck and and slide it down your shirt you're good to go it's not going to go anywhere there's no worry about that possibly catching on any equipment that could cause an injury all right next these are new to us uh cooling bands obviously we have to have those facial covers uh this is a new option that gives you the ability to have a facial cover that can actually cool you down a little bit so this is a lightweight moisture wicking wicking uh product It'll pull that sweat away from the body, pull that heat away from the body and allow that heat to uh, move away from the neck and the face, uh, which is a, a huge key right now. That's where we're seeing some of the most major uh, heat causing issues is the face. And that's because we're wearing masks or we're wearing face shields and it's not allowing the face to breathe. So the inner layer wicks away the moisture from the skin and transports it away from the, the, uh, the body uh, and you know, it's uh, resists odor and damage to ultraviolet rays. So this can be used outside. This can be used inside wherever you need to use it. Uh, and then it gives you a, an added protection factor against wind, sun and dust. So if it's a, a very hot day, it's another way to protect against uh, sunburn. Uh, if it's a windy day, you don't want wind burned either. So uh, these are some of the other bandanas I told you about. Uh, that's the neck band right there on the bottom left. But we have, uh, you know, full head styles. These are all cooling products. So all of these products can be used uh, to cool down the body. We also have inside our hard hats, the ability to add a cooling product. So if you have to wear a hard hat when you're on site, it's a great addition to, to give your employees who are wearing those hard hats all day long. Um, a, a hard hat that is vented, uh, although it will not make electrical standards, uh, it does provide about 10 to 15 percent cooling. So if they can go with a vented hard hat, do a vented hard hat. If they can't, if we can only use a uh, a class E or a class 
uh, G hard hat, uh, then you know this might be a good option for them. Uh, all right. So also along with hard hats or head protection items, we do have neck coolers. So these neck shades, not only do they provide shade, but they can be cooled down by dunked in, dunking into cold water and provides you with with uh, some more cooling on the back of the, the neck and the head. Uh, we also have uh, a, uh, that's just a ranger hat. It's made of the same material that the neck cooling shade is, uh, but it's gonna cool your whole head down. So, and provide you some shade. So it's a nice little addition. These are traditional shades. These help with, with giving the employee some relief from the sun, uh, a little bit from the wind, uh, but it is mostly to allow for uh, some shaded surface while you're standing out in the sun. It's not really gonna be an active cooling product. It's more of a uh, indirect cooling product. Now on the, the realm of active, this is as active as, as it gets. So these are cooling vests. We have an ANSI style vest right there. So if they are required to wear an ANSI style vest, uh, this is a great option. They can wear this on top of clothing and they are completely ANSI uh, qualified. They have R type R class two ratings to them. Um, but if you want to wear that underneath the garment, uh, we do have that tank top. And actually we have a new option for uh, active cooling, which is actually gonna have some um, cooling packs in there that aren't held directly on the skin. They are, uh, there is a barrier between the, the ice pack and the cooling uh, product so that you don't feel a major freeze, uh, but it does cool down the body. And that's this product right here, actually. So this is our, our first multi-cooling vest. Uh, not only does it have the phase cooling, which is those ice packs on the bottom there, but it's also an evaporative, evaporative cooling vest. So it's made of mesh and thin material that again, just like those other products, will pull that moisture away from the skin uh, and allow for the cooling process to happen. All right, uh, this is another style of, of cooling product. Um, it's ice packs. This is a heavier duty style. So if you've got a, uh, an employee who is welding all day long, it can get very, very hot. Uh, they probably need something that's a little stronger and that's gonna give them a little, longe little more longevity on site. Uh, so if they're gonna be doing that for five, six, seven hours a day, uh, something like a, uh, a cooling product that is evaporative, so one where you've dunked it into cold water to actually cool it down, may not be the right option. They may need something that's going to actively cool them throughout the day uh, without them having to stop and re-soak an item. So this would be a great option for that. If, and if that's the case, they come with insulated cooling bags, um, the actual ice packs themselves, uh, you can buy extra in case you want to switch them out every so many hours, every three or four hours. Uh, but it is a great option for those employees that need active cooling for long periods of time throughout the day. This is again on, on that evaporative cooling side. Uh, this is evap evaporative cooling sleeves. I actually showed this a little earlier uh, as a way to identify employees. Uh, it's also a way of keeping those employees cool throughout the day. So. This is again made from that same type of material that can be wet uh, and cool yourself down. It doesn't have to be soaking wet, just enough to, to provide some moisture to your body. Um, but it's also a great way to protect against the sun. These sleeves are uh, UPF 40, so they're gonna protect against any kind of exposure to the sun that could cause a sunburn. All right, so next, uh, performance wicking shirts. Uh, this has become a little more popular lately. A lot of customers uh, want to have their employees easily identifiable uh, and making sure that they are wearing PPE items that's going to uh, adhere to either R3 or R2 standards of ANSI. So uh, these are R3 options. Uh, obviously the one on the far right there uh, is not an R3, that would be just a type uh, class zero one, and that just means that it, it can't be used on, on a roadside or as a high vis garment. But the other garments do meet the high vis protocols uh, that ANSI set forward. So um, it's a great option. These these allow you to put something on your employee that you can logo. You know that that it's your employee wearing that uh, when they're on site, 
and it helps to wick away any kind of moisture again so that they're feeling cooler throughout the day. It's also not tight fitting. So that is uh, another bonus to keeping the employees cool. All right, um, we've just started getting a, a little bit more of a request uh, into getting specialized garments. Uh, these garments uh, right here are specifically built for a woman's figure. So uh, men and women uh, tend to have different figures when it comes to wearing clothing. And if you do have any kind of employee on site uh, that is a female that wants to have something that's a little more uh, form, form fitting so that you don't have that risk of it possibly snagging on a piece of equipment and, and possibly injuring you, uh, and also so that you don't have any kind of issues with uh, the garment itself um, just wearing out. Uh, this is a great option. If it's wear, if it's worn properly and it's fitting properly, it's going to last you longer. All right. So this one right here is is kind of a cool one. Everyone knows our our gloves uh, pretty well. The Maxi Flex style gloves uh, have uh, evolved over the years. We have cut style gloves. Uh, we've now got touchscreen style in in the Maxi Flex gloves. Uh, but uh, this is a newer technology that actually is an essential oil that's added to the glove itself. Uh, it is it does meet uh, any kind of uh, heart association uh, certifications. It also meets dermatological tests, so this isn't going to cause a skin irritation. Um, but what it does do is it kind of acts like a antiperspirant. It's going to cause your hands to sweat a little bit less. Uh, which also means they're going to stay cooler throughout the day. So if you see that picture right there, uh, it says 67% less hot zone. Uh, so when they had a heat gun on it, you could actually see that the hand itself, uh, whether it was performing work or not, stayed cooler uh, with this new style glove on. So you get that same protection, that same safety factor that you're looking for, but you don't have to deal with the extreme heats and especially if you're working outside uh, outside positions obviously a gray and black glove does tend to attract uh, the sun uh, especially black it's going to get a little bit hotter so uh, we have had call for uh, employees who wanted something that's a little cooler this gives them that option so uh, great option to 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 put on your employee's hand if they're already used to the maxi flex glove line now, the next slide here, I went into uh, a little bit of the fogless technology, and I went into this specifically because the issue that we've run into uh, over the last couple of years is that the, uh, the gloves themselves uh, are having issues with heat, but our, our faces are not taken care of. So because we're wearing masks and dealing with uh, a lot of issues with glasses fogging up, uh, we had to come up with something. So the Fogless 360 line of, of safety glasses here is to address that. So our Fogless 360 is not just a coating, it's actually built into the lens. So for the life of the lens, you're gonna have a coating that won't fog up. The, the issue is uh, you know, the fog and the moisture stops any kind of vision for the employee. So they're having issues seeing their work piece in front of them. They take the glasses off, which then exposes them to future issues. Uh, and we really need to guard against that. So our best option is to put something on their face that they don't want to take off. The Fogless 360 line of glasses has a hydrophobic technology built into it that will stop the fogging. It's not going to stop moisture from building up. Moisture still builds up whether we, we stop the fog or not, but what it'll allow is that moisture to beat up and run off of the glass. So those glasses stay on longer and keep the employee safe. So we have a bunch of different options in those Fogless 360 glasses. Some of those options come in standard safety glasses that you've seen all over. So we have you know a, a semi-rimmed pair there, we have rimless, whatever style you're looking for um, is available and uh, we're there to, to protect every person on the job site. So if your managers want to wear one style, they can. And if your other employees want to wear a, a more traditional style, like the captain or the pulse, uh, we have that option in Fogless 360. 
Now for specialized applications, if you run into an issue where you need uh, an application to guard against dust, or if there's any kind of environmental issue where things could get into the eyes, uh, we've come out with a couple other fogless 360 models. So the fuselage there is a great option. That's our number one seller in the hybrid glasses. It has a foam insert on it. It can actually be converted into a banded model. So if you're still having issues with dust and dirt getting into the glass, even with a foam insert, and you need it to be a little tighter on the face, uh, it can be banded and that comes standard with that glass. Comes in clear, comes in smoke, uh, but it gives you an option to guard against any of that outside uh, contaminant that could get into your eyes. The Fortify is also another great option for that. Uh, similar technology, it does have a wider lens. So if you're worried about loss of uh, sight or loss of peripheral sight, uh, the Fortify is a great option because it is a larger, larger uh, lens itself. But again, it's a hybrid glass, comes with that band so that you can band it and turn it into more of a goggle style. And then next we've got the stone, which is a true goggle. The, the cool thing about the stone is it actually comes with a uh, optional face guard. So, you know, everyone's been wearing face shields. If you need to guard your face uh, from either contamination from COVID purposes, or if you're just dealing with a lot of uh, debris that could be flying towards the face, it's a great option. It fits very nicely uh, onto that stone goggle. It slips right into that red uh, connector on the side of it and fits fairly close to the face. So you can still fit a respirator underneath or some type of uh, face covering. Uh, it'll allow for that, but otherwise it's going to be fairly tight and that's to make sure that we're protecting uh, as much of the face as possible. And then the mission goggle is another style of goggle that offers uh, everything that you want out of a goggle. It's going to be uh, very comfortable, uh, very breathable in terms of a goggle. It has some venting on it to allow for, for breathability uh, and it's good against splash indirect. So um, another great option there for you. So that's all I've got. So we're going to go into the raffle now, which I'll hand over to Ann. Thank you, Chris. Um, Shelly, did you want to add anything at this point or should I just go right into the raffle? No, you can go into the raffle. Okay, so um, I am excited about this. Um, uh, very. So our uh, the three uh, winners of the raffle, we have Alex Ramirez with Disneyland Resorts. We have Darren Horner with Delta Y and Maria Aspiro with Passport Foods. So uh, Shelly will reach out to each of you as we will need glove sizes, as well as whether you're interested uh, in a clear lens or a dark lens on the Fogless 360. Uh, the, the, uh, the gift pack will include uh, cooling towels. It'll include uh, a couple of the cooling sleeves and some of the newer products for you to try at home. And um, we wanna thank you for your time today. And if there are any questions, feel free to ask. Well, um, all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, thank you so much, Chris and Ann, for such a great presentation, and thank you everyone for attending today's webinar. Uh, One Source will be offering supplier training webinars every month, so be on the lookout for more information. Thank you so much, and have a wonderful day. Thank you.